So, um, just with respect to what Johnson said kind of a few times now, that there has to be some sort of end game in mind for the conflict in Ukraine, I just want to ask you personally, what, what is your definition of an end? I mean, is this when they take back to Donbass? Is that when maybe they go past that to Crimea? And then secondly, um, maybe to someone who went on the CODEL, uh, did Tucker's interview with Putin come up? And if so, what kind of reactions were there from uh, some of the leadership there in Ukraine? I think the members have made clear, but I'm going to yield to them, uh, that significant progress has already been made by the Ukrainians fighting bravely to defend their homeland along with democracy, freedom, and American values that are on the line in connection uh, with our traditional alliance with NATO. But let me yield to Mikey, if you want to talk Abigail. Well, just on the... On the, on the trip. Uh, in I defer to the CIA always. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to quantify, right, the Ukrainians have fought and won back more than 50% of the territory that the Russians have taken uh, since the 2022 invasion. Because of the Ukrainians fighting against the Russians, uh, more than 20 million metric tons of grain were able to get out of Ukraine and into the world food market, right? The absence of that would have been catastrophic. So when we're talking about the, the, what success looks like, the Ukrainians have been sustaining success, but they need the resources and the ability to continue further. As for uh, the Tucker Carlson interview, uh, and I'll, I'll fact check myself on this with, uh, with Representative Crow, uh, we of course spoke about it on, on the CODEL quite a bit, uh, but it actually did not come up with any of my conversations with Ukrainian interlocutors. Um, and I would argue that it's because the ridiculous nature of an American so-called journalist uh, allowing for Putin to unleash propaganda uh, for an extended <coughs> period of time just wasn't worthy of the types of conversations that we were having, ones that were actually serious conversations about U.S. national security interests uh, and the challenges facing our allies. I don't know if you had any others. <laughs> Yeah, the Ukrainians are too busy fighting a war to really give a damn what a Putin, Putin pro propagandist is saying in, in Moscow. So they, they're not paying attention to Tucker Carlson for sure. Uh, but uh, on the, the point of what does the end game look like, I think this is a really important point. Um, I, I understand, you know, having served like many of my colleagues in Afghanistan during multiple deployments, I cannot understand the reluctance uh, by America of getting involved uh, in a protracted conflict or engagement. But uh, this is not that. And I can say that very clearly, right? American troops are not doing the fighting and dying. Uh, and we are not going to need to continue to pass supplemental after supplemental because one thing that was really clear from our visit is the remarkable, the remarkable efforts in Ukraine to stand up its own industrial base and to move towards economic self-sufficiency. They, they are moving fast to build their own industrial base, to, to build their own weapons. They simply need a bridge to self-sufficiency. And that's what this supplemental bill will, will do, is it will buy them the critical time that they need in 2024, the bridge to self-sufficiency, to stand on their own. And if we're able to help them do that, they will stand on their own, they will be strong, they will be independent, they will be fierce, and they will be friends of the United States. And that is something that we all should want. I just want to sort of foot stomp on what Abigail and Jason said and your question about what does success look like. We have seen the Ukrainians keep the port of Odessa open. You remember the agreement they had with Russia, which Russia walked back, but the port is open, shipping out grain supplies to largely the African continent, which is critical for the world food supply. We have seen Ukraine hold Kyiv, which Russia thought it was going to roll over in a matter of days. They have kept Kyiv free to, to date. And we've seen them keep the eastern manufacturing sector, which, as Jason was pointing out, will allow them to be independent. It produced about 90 percent of Soviet-era munitions, so that's a really critical piece of the country. Success largely looks like 
um, where, where the Ukrainians are today, as, as you probably heard, we thought that Russia was the second best military in the world, only to find they were the second best military in Ukraine. So it's really, I think, where we are today um, has, has been a great success story for the Ukrainian military. But when I hear from people, well, why, you know, why doesn't Russia then kind of sue for people? Why don't we come to the table with Russia? There is no reason right now for Putin, as we are standing here, not having passed a supplemental, there is no reason for Putin to think, why end it now, right? Why not wait it out, see if his friend, the former President Trump, gets into office so they can form their alliance against NATO, I guess. I, I mean, this is the time that we pass the supplemental. This is the time that we support Ukrainian success. This is the time that we stand for what America has always stood for, um, democracy and supporting our allies. And if I could also add kind of what success doesn't look like. What success doesn't look like is I had the opportunity to travel to Lithuania a few weeks ago, had the chance to meet with their assistant minister of defense where he was genuinely um, apoplectic about the uh, possibilities that Putin would win Ukraine and would continue as he has, has explicitly said to roll up uh, the rest of Europe, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia. They believe our next. They absolutely do believe that they're next. And that's not just about our NATO allies and, and what our responsibilities are. On uh, that trip, I had the opportunity to visit our troops. And Pennsylvania, this is where I'm from, uh, has a National Guard relationship with Lithuania. That's our partner. And so our, our, our uh, servicemen and women are stationed in Lithuania within miles uh, of Belarus, miles of Belarus. And so if you think that what success looks like, what we want to also think of is, is what success doesn't look like. And what that does look like is our men and women in uniform being in harm's way and being on the front line. Last question. 